I'm going to show you now how to create a custom fill. Uh, I was given this pattern of a herringbone tile and asked how to create this. So first thing we need to know is how big the tile is. And so we have made the tile 150 by 900. It could be different. It could be whatever you want it to be. So how did I create this? I'll show you the sequence and then I'll go and actually do it. So I created a fill. I like using the fill because it's a very simple tool. I created a fill that is 150 by 900 and then I duplicated the pattern. The first thing I want you to notice is that I haven't done it in the same orientation. I haven't done it on an angle. I've tried to make it simple, make it rectilinear um, or orthogonal maybe. Uh, so that way it's easier to work with. That's the point. We don't need it to be in a particular angle. We can rotate the angle once the fill is created. The next thing we need to do is find the repeating pattern. And this, this took me a bit longer than I like to admit. Um, because I started with making it too small. So I started just by creating a pattern like this. And I hoped that I'd be able to find a repeating pattern in this, and it didn't work. So if in doubt, make it bigger. And then what you're looking for when you're trying to create a repeating pattern is the start and the stop. So if you remember maybe playing um, Snake on the old Nokias, we're looking for what does it look like when it comes in the other end of the screen. So if we're looking at this red box, pink box, from the left hand side to the right hand side, from the top to the bottom, do they connect? So we have here a full rectangle. We've included a full rectangle horizontally, which means when we get down to here, we want to exclude that full rectangle. We don't want to include it. When we look over here, we've got a full rectangle included. And so when we go over here, we want to exclude that full vertical rectangle. And that's the premise. We want it to be almost repeating, but just shy of. And that ensures that we will create a pattern that is seamless when we create it. Now, what do we do from here? I'm using fills because I like using fills. It makes drawing easy, but we don't want to have fills to create a fill pattern. We need to turn it into lines. So what I've done is to create another worksheet. This one's called Trace, and I've traced so this was the fill that I used to define the shape. I can delete that one. And I've drawn it with lines. So I've drawn the whole pattern minus where we shouldn't have an edge. So where should we have an edge? When it's a full pattern, we should see a full edge. So we've got one full one here, one full one here, a full one here, and that's about it. We don't want to repeat any patterns that should not be filled is the simple answer to this. Once we've then created this, we select it. We select everything, edit, copy. Now, I don't necessarily need to repeat this line here because this line here is repeated here. So I could delete that one if I wanted to. And I can delete anything that replicates again. So if this was to replicate down here, I could delete this line. The more lines we have, the um, more complicated the vector-based fill is, and we don't really want that. So we only want as, as many lines as are necessary. So think about left to right and so on. So we can select all of those, copy or edit, copy, and then we need to go into the fill that we're creating. This is the one that I created. We see that this is a fill. So let's so assume that I'm not doing that. Options, element attributes, fills, and we need to copy an existing one. So we can use this one. We'll say copy. Let's rephrase that. Because I've already created one, let's shrink the size of this one. Let's make this one edit, reshape, resize. 50%. Copy that. Option element attributes fills new. I'm going to duplicate this original one and I'll change this to 450 by 75 just so you can see that it's visually different. Of course, we don't need to create a different fill with a different scale. We can just use the scale tool. But for now, this will be fine. OK. And then we paste this new pattern. Press OK. <coughs> Go to my fill tool, let's choose the new size, 450 by 75, and draw the shape. So here we can see a, a perfect herringbone, and you say, well, what about the angle? The angle is wrong. In the picture that we had, let's go back to the fill, 
In this picture, the herringbone needs to be vertical. We want to have that chevron effect. So we go into the field tool, the settings. Now we can place this in the same way. I can choose to change its angle. I can choose to click. Where's the origin? important for a tile set out and also change the angle. So if I was to change that to 45 degrees, 45 degrees, I can change the angle in which that fill appears. And now I can make that any angle I want. But you can see how that works. And the point of being able to change the origin is that I can map this to start with a tile set out point anywhere I want to on my wall. So particularly for bathroom walls, if you're trying to create an internal elevation or a floor plan with a particular tile pattern and show the uh, set out, this is a great way to do it. This is how you create a field tool and hopefully this gives you a bit of uh, license or understanding to know that you can create almost any fill shape that you want as long as it is a repeatable pattern, even if it is as complicated as this herringbone.